I'm Lieutenant Commander Steve Dundas. I've been in the military 30 years. I've been in the Navy since 1999. When we got to Iraq, our mission was to support U.S. Marine Corps and Army advisors across the entire Al Anbar province. And these teams were out by themselves, and they would very seldom, if ever, see a chaplain because of their isolation. I would go out and provide counseling, religious services. The hardest parts of the deployment, one, I'd had a lot of experience as a trauma department chaplain. See, I've seen a lot of death. But when I got there and actually saw our wounded Marines and soldiers, prayed with them, anointed them, that was one of the really hard things, was to see what war does to these warriors. I had studied a lot about PTSD and dealt with Marines who had it. I thought I was pretty much untouchable to it because I thought I had seen everything, but I was really surprised by some of the things I saw and the impact that they had, the sights, the smells especially, the exhaustion of the travel. Uh, we went through some of the most dangerous areas of Iraq, occasionally got shot at, and there was always an understanding that Al-Qaeda had chaplains at the top of their target list. <laughs> when I came back to the States, I just felt so disconnected from people, church. I didn't even know if God still existed. And uh, that was one of the most painful parts of my life. Prayer became really hard. Um, just going, doing life became hard. I was depressed, angry, um, on edge all the time. Finally, our um, medical officer did an assessment and was convinced that I was really beginning to suffer PTSD and uh, got me connected with the Deployment Health Clinic at Portsmouth Naval Medical Center. And I started seeing a therapist there, trying to figure out how to deal with my experience. For me, writing is something that allows me to work through things that if I didn't write them out, would gnaw at me. And some of that deals with my own struggle with PTSD and faith. Some of it deals with how I see the world now. And then part of it is those things that are part of me. My dad, growing up, baseball. About the only place I can be in a crowd of people and still feel really safe is at a baseball game. And part of it's just the way the diamond's laid out and just the peacefulness of it. My role as a chaplain is to provide the spiritual support for people as they make this journey and as they begin to open up about what they've gone through. But many times it requires more than just the chaplain. And so I'll say, you know, I know it's scary, but I think that you need to seek the help of a mental health professional uh, because it's a way to get better. And I tell them my experiences, which are good experiences with both of the therapists I've had, that they understood and they didn't push me into some track that I was unable to go to. I realize you can't go back you can't go back to what you were. You have to adapt to what you are. Do you want to be healthy? Yes. Do you want to be well-adjusted? Yes. Does that mean you're going to be the same person you were before you went to war? No. Nobody is. But that's okay. If we open ourselves up to get help, it's not something that we're going to be better overnight. What it will be, though, is a step on the way to healing, a step on the way to integrating those experiences with our daily life now. I don't think it is weakness to seek help. In fact, I think it's a sign of strength. I think it's a sign that you want to move forward. And what I hope is that when I spend time with people, when I share with people, when I listen to people, that I can help them 
to begin that process if they haven't already started and to encourage them if they're already getting some therapy. Uh, provide that extra bit of support, that extra bit of connection so that they don't feel that they're alone.